Once you're engaged with the feeling, slowing down to ask yourself, what are you good at? You know, what are your skills? What are the special talents that you have that you bring perhaps to life already in your hobbies or your job? What are the things that get you out of bed in the morning? You know, the things that really bring you joy, the things that give you that life energy that will make something stick. If you start to orient yourself towards this crisis, you know, having someone author your form of action for you is not going to work because humans are fickle creatures. We need to feel that we wrote the story ourselves in order for us to want to step into that. Um, so looking for joy and looking for, yeah, your passions is important in finding your role in purposeful climate action. And then looking at, you know, what's all the work that requires doing right now. And if you overlay these things, and this is actually a great diagram that a marine biologist named Ayana Elizabeth Johnson came up with, you can find a, a, a space of agency that you can walk into where you're applying your skills, you're doing something that brings you joy, and you're addressing the threat. So if you're really into fashion, why not look at the fact that the fast fashion industry is producing a huge microplastics problem as well as disposable clothing that is making all of these issues worse. For example, being able to apply your skills there. Um, I'm not trying to say that everyone needs to stop their career and start something new. I know a lot of us can't afford to do that, um, but many, many can. Many can shift and orient themselves towards addressing this, which, is in itself going to be meaningful on that existential level if you're feeling all of these distressing, challenging existential emotions that are popping up. Right. So for me, you know, my whole story started with questioning the wisdom of whether or not it's okay to have a child given what I know about the climate crisis, feeling new forms of anxiety and grief and anger about the idea that people my age and younger, many of us are feeling that it's our duty now to prevent potential suffering at the cost of getting to know our own children, processing that, and then quitting my job, quitting my old field. I had just completed a doctorate in something completely different, freshly minted to go into that space, but I said, okay, no, not gonna do it. I need to come over here. There's a lot of work to be done. Um, you know, doing the grunt work to be able to participate in contributing to this burgeoning field around climate and mental health. And now, because I'm focusing on, on that work and, and doing work that supports others, because when they come in and, and share with me how it's affecting them, that feels really meaningful, it helps me cope, you know? And then it's like, all oh, right, there's longevity in this, even if it gets as bad as I'm sometimes very afraid that it will. So, there are so many other people who have big ideas about how to live at this time and how to be at this time, given what's going on. And all of that is this connection of finding meaning and purpose in it. And, you know, not to be too dire, but um, you know it's bad when you have to whip out the Viktor Frankl, right? right. Like man's yeah. search for meaning. And that is the same logic that applies here. So he who suffered inhumane torture for years at the hands of the Nazis in concentration camps argues that he was psychologically nourished the whole time by holding on to that uncertainty. Uncertainty about whether or not he was going to be killed. It allowed for this capacious openness about the future for anything to potentially happen because he didn't know his fate for sure. And what brought him meaning was the dream that he would be able to one day lecture around the world and, and share with people from his own story that man's search for meaning is the thing that keeps humans going and that we can always find meaning even in suffering. And that actually did come true for him. And he, yeah. you know, so um, it's kind of the same thing with, with facing your biggest fears about the climate crisis and then deciding to do something meaningful with them. Mm -hmm.